Good morning, this is Terry Allen. It's September 30th, 2022. This is get, definitely going to be a car rant because there is a lot of shit to rant about today. First, did anybody see The View in the last couple of days? Hillary Clinton, certified war criminal, and her daughter, Chelsea Clinton, have a new show called Gutsy. <laughs> what is wrong with everyone? First, let's take a look at the Nuremberg Tribunals where the United States tried the Nazis after World War II. That is our standard for a war criminal. It's the definition of a war criminal, and there's several things that somebody can do to be a war criminal, according to Nuremberg tribunals. One is experimenting on people with experimental drugs or other crazy shit. Siege warfare, where you basically starve out a population encompass them, encircle them, starve them out, that's a war crime. Killing civilians, that's a war crime. Bombing a country back to the Stone Age and then walking away and allowing chaos to ensue, which happened in Libya. A certified war criminal is on stage being applauded by a moronic audience that knows absolutely nothing about nothing. You should have seen these people in the audience. They're all glassy-eyed. Oh my God, isn't Hillary wonderful? She is an evil human being that personally pushed the destruction of Libya and the ouster of, well, the death, of the murder by a sword up the ass of Libya and walked away, essentially, let Al-Qaeda just take over the country. You've got murder in the streets. You've got absolute chaos. And you've got open slave markets going on right now in Libya. And she laughed about it. We saw, we came. Coffee's, uh, Gaddafi's dead. My God, my God, my God. <sighs> Madeleine Albright, that's another war criminal. Remember that interview? I think it was with Leslie Stahl, I'm not sure. Or this was after some of the mayhem in Iraq where we had indiscriminately bombed day after day under Clinton. And she asked, was it worth it to kill half a million children? Which is the estimate that the Red Cross had was that there was half a million children dead. And she said, and I quote, we think that it was. That's a certified war criminal. There's no doubt about it. And according to the rules laid down by the Nuremberg Tribunal, a war criminal should be hung. So, how many war criminals do we have running around free with book deals and hanging out at Martha's Vineyard, having cocktail parties, okay, let's name a few. George W. Bush, Bill Clinton, Hillary Clinton, Barack Obama, yes, a war criminal. Whatever you want to say about him, he is a certified war criminal because of the torture programs that were going on and extended by Barack Obama. The droning of innocent civilians, they estimate that about 8 out of 10 
deaths for civilians from these drone strikes. The, the Nuremberg tribunals are so important. We need to take a look at that. Get your books out or go online and read about the findings of the Nuremberg tribunals. And that's how you determine who's a war criminal. Those laws have not been changed. So why does the United States and Americans not understand that and praise these people, bow before them and kiss their feet and kiss their rings and stick their head right up their ass? Fuck. I mean, this is pure evil. And what's going on about it? Nothing. Not a goddamn thing. Not anything. It's an abomination. Now, the world knows. The world knows about this. It's like America's the only one that doesn't know because it's not taught in schools. You don't get anything in high school about it. I went to high school, not a word. I went to high school. Oh, Israel is a wonderful place. And isn't it great? And now that Israel has taken over Palestine, now Jesus is going to come back. Jesus Christ. Well, he hasn't returned yet. And there's a lot of people dead over there. A lot of Palestinians dead. I just don't get it because I knew about this stuff back in the 80s when I got out of high school. I got out of college. I went to engineering college, so they didn't really teach history, maybe history of physics and things. But So I didn't learn any of that until I got out of school. And I joined the Fusion Energy Foundation, which was an organization that was trying to push the development of fusion energy as the energy source of the future. It's working on it, and they're still working on it. And then there was an organization founded by Lenin LaRouche. And if you want to see the criminality of the Democratic Party and the corporate media in the 80s, he got the Alex Jones treatment, he got the Trump treatment, he was vilified, declared an anti-Semite, a neo-Nazi, everything in the book to discredit him and his policy ideas. This was in the 80s, and what triggered his um, imprisonment was the fact that his publication company found out about the Iran-Contra fiasco and the Oliver North was running it and George Herbert Walker Bush was in charge of it. They uncovered it a year before the major media came up with it, so I knew about it. And during the trial, the that was in Boston, it was a credit card fraud trial. But during that trial, the judge realized that LaRouche was right, his attorney was right, and he ordered to seize all the documents in George Herbert Walker Bush's, he was vice president at the time, all of his files, lock his office down. Immediately, boom! trial. Oh, can't have this. Oh my God. So much for justice in America. And then they moved it down to Alexandria, Virginia. And then they started it all over, which was totally illegal. And Alexandria, Virginia, as everybody knows, that's the intelligence community. That's there. Well, good luck trying to ever get a fair trial in that court. It's called the rocket docket. Everybody knows it. Ramsey Clark, the Attorney General under, um, I believe it was President, 
you know, the peanut farmer. <laughs> what? President Carter, why can't I remember his name? Oh my God. Anyway, Ramsey Clark was uh, Lyndon LaRouche's attorney. And he said, look, I don't agree with everything LaRouche says, but I will fight to the death for his right to say it. Now that is an American patriot. That is someone that understands the Constitution. That is someone that understands how important the First Amendment is. And my God, look what the Democrats are doing to the Constitution now. They're just ripping up the First Amendment. Ripping it up because we have got to protect Americans. And so we got to violate their rights to protect them. God, what a pile of shit. And everything that they're doing in the violations of the First Amendment are because they are trying to protect themselves and the criminality of what's going on. The military, CIA, the deep state, everything that's been going on is criminal. What the deep state did, the FBI, how they did the FISA warrants, all that was done by Hillary Clinton. We all know that now. Nothing is happening to her. Why is she still on stage with people fawning over her ass? A war criminal, a certified war criminal, and people are bowing at her feet. What is wrong with everybody? Why can't you see that? Because you got to read the Nuremberg Tribunal. Anyway, we are in a desperate state. We are... That's one of the reasons why Americans are going along with this Ukraine fiasco and allowing NATO to run amok is because of the Russiagate hoax that Hillary Clinton personally started because she was trying to come up with an excuse why she couldn't beat a, a game show host, Donald Trump, because... <laughs> Nobody liked her. She's a miserable human being. Her voice is like fingernails on a chalkboard. Her speeches, oh God. Every time she opened her mouth, her popularity rating went down. <laughs> they started this Russia bullshit and hounded Trump illegally got FISA warrants. These are major crimes. And I think, and others think too, that Seth Rich was the insider. He was their IT specialist for the Democratic Party. And he was the one that downloaded all the emails off of Clinton's server and gave it to WikiLeaks. Two weeks later, dead dead on a sidewalk at 4 a.m. in Georgetown, Washington, D.C. Not Rob. He had a very expensive expensive watch that he had and some cash in his wallet. Shot in the back. Nothing is gone about it. Nobody says a word. Unbelievable. Absolutely unbelievable. It's absolutely the most aggravating situation I've ever seen. Something I wanted to mention. I know people are saying, I oh, just love Jimmy Dore and you say whatever he says. I've watched lots and lots of YouTube channels. News channels, whatever I can get my, my uh, ears on and my eyes. And he's one of the best. Because in the 80s, I learned a ton of information about what goes on with the United States government and the military and the war crimes that were going on back then and how we had a deep state back then. So when I saw all this going on now, it's like deja vu all over again. I wasn't surprised. You know, they went after Alex Jones and Alex Jones is kind of wacko. But a lot of the stuff that he reports is true. That's why they went after him. Not because he's like a wacko, because he apologized for this Sandy Sandy Hook thing, I think it was. The, uh, the 
murder of children at the school. And I saw the videos, and yeah, it looked weird. It definitely looked weird. Something was going on. It looked like it was orchestrated. That's what he thought. Others thought that. That's why he said it looked fake. Well, oh my God. Maybe it was, maybe it wasn't. But he apologized and said, look, I don't have any real evidence. I thought that was what it might be. But no, they had to go after him, shut him down, take him off of social media. And now they tried him. They're trying him again, trying to bankrupt him. Why? Because he's uncovering crimes of the deep state and the oligarchy. That is the only reason why they took him down. But the American population thinks it's something else, of course. Because the American population is being diverted from reality. And here's a good example of being diverted from reality. Is that wacko teacher in Canada, apparently a trans teacher, there's been a huge uproar about it, all over the news, all over the internet, it's gone viral. This guy found somewhere, I'm, I'm sure he found it in an adult store, um, these massive plastic breasts, has put them on, and he's saying, well, this is my gender identity, and you can't do anything about it. He's teaching children with these massive breasts, with big plastic nipples showing through his see-through shirt or sweater that he's wearing to high school students and the school board is doing nothing because Canada has these really strict laws about how you've got to bow before someone's gender identity and you gotta tell them, you gotta call them by their pronouns that they prefer. What in the hell is going on with the world? People are nuts. His, his gender identity, his sexual identity, is he wants to be a porn star, okay? Obviously, because that's the only ones that would ever have breasts that big. I don't think there is any human being on this earth that has real breasts that big. <sighs> yeah, I understand we want to be diverse and we, we want to be inclusive and we've had a lot of discrimination bigotry in this country is all over the world it's a horrible situation but when you start push putting these crazy things in there with the legitimate stuff that we need to stop it makes people crazy you know I consider myself a liberal I consider myself right or, sorry I consider myself left wing but the people in government now are not leftists and they are not liberals. They are fascists. Uh, Biden, Joe Biden is a fascist. Because the stuff they are pushing is to give the government power to the corporations, the major corporations that is the definition of fascism is when the government and the major corporations get together and the government allows these corporations to do whatever they want in the name of the holy god of profit so whatever you got to do to make more profit is a good thing that's capitalism well what that is is predatory capitalism free trade which is no such thing as free trade when you have different populations with different standards of living and different um, wage rates and you shove your factory down there in Mexico worker, general workers in Mexico are still making five dollars a day I was down there I know for a fact I was down there last year and they were making a joke about it the, the owners of the company were making a joke about it, how they, if they wanted to buy a pair of jeans, they got to take out a loan. Disgusting, disgusting. The Maquiadoras down there, where they find all this cheap labor, it's like shanty towns, like cord, cardboard and um, 
duct tape, you know, like disgusting places to live, with open sewers running down the middle of the street, children barefoot playing around in it. I've seen it with my own eyes, and it's an abomination. Human beings should not live that way. And that is the reason why we've got the, the illegal immigration problem today is because of what? NAFTA. Who pushed NAFTA? Joe Biden and Bill Clinton pushed NAFTA and they got NAFTA passed. The North American Free Trade Agreement. Well, well, well. What did that do? That broke down all the tariffs and all of the laws which allowed factories, U.S. factories, to go down to Mexico to exploit the cheap labor and to exploit the EPA, the, the lack of EPA and environmental protections in Mexico. It's a wreck down there. NAFTA destroyed that country and created a massive, a massive population of poverty. I used to work down there. I used to install equipment down there for printing companies. And the day that NAFTA passed was the day that I never went back for 10 years because what happened was Citibank, they allowed the peso, the Mexican peso, to float on the world uh, commodity exchanges. They allowed that currency to float, which gave Citibank the ability to devaluate their currency. At the time, it was three pesos to the dollar. And now, after NAFTA passed, they, they devaluated the currency to seven pesos to the dollar. What did that do? That wiped out everything. No longer were the Mexicans able to afford to buy anything from the United States. The factories, the CEOs, and the stockholders in New York and Wall Street started just pushing factories down there for the cheap labor. Unbelievable. And it was legal because it have to pass. Thank you, Joe Biden and Bill Clinton. How many millions of American families lost their incomes, lost their homes? How many homeless did we get out of that? Absolutely disgusting because they took all that wealth and they transferred it to the top 1%. Once again, oligarchy. That's the oligarchy and that's the way they do it. They, they turn it into some kind of crazy legal thing. That is our enemy, is the oligarchy. It's the 1%. And they own the media, and they are pushing this woke, the social liberalism bullshit, making people crazy. This, this accepting of this gender identity bullshit as something real. Pushing racism. Pitting one race against another. Pitting... The, uh, the illegal aliens, which actually um, probably pay more taxes than they take out. They are pitting each of us against each of us. So that we are diverting our eyes and our attention from the oligarchy. The oligarchy, what is that? That's the Jeff Epstein shit. The child prostitution ring child molestation ring or that was the CIA that did that when he went to trial back in the early early 2000s I think in Florida and what did they give him? A sweetheart deal. Well, that's Alan Dershowitz for you. He was recommending that the age of consent be dropped down to 14. <laughs> that should show you something about that scumbag. And then he said well I, I didn't have sex with the uh, underage girls because when they gave me a massage, I had my underwear on. <laughs> oh, shit. That's, that's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. What happened with that, with those trials? Elaine Maxwell, she's in jail, and it's just... 
being swept under the rug. That was a blackmail operation. That's what that was. Heads of state, attorneys, lawyers, the, um, the judges, congressmen, senators, all went down there, all were videotaped with having sex with minors. What happens then? Oh, that's some great blackmail material. They had the black book, whatever happened to that? Bill Clinton was down there 21 times. He's one of the worst perpetrators. Man, man. It's amazing how this criminality goes right under our very noses and nobody does shit about it because of what? The reason is because the Democrats and the Republicans are both criminals. The, the, it's a criminal operation like the Mafia, like the Crips and the Bloods. And so they don't go after each other because they're both guilty of the same crimes. So they make a lot of good speeches. They do a lot of lip service. They do a lot of gaslighting. They make you think that they're doing something for the population and they're doing nothing. They're giving big tax breaks to the wealthy. What are they doing? Nothing. They're making a holiday. They're giving the black population a holiday. Aren't we wonderful? Look at us. We're so we're so woke that we're going to help you guys out by giving you a holiday. <laughs> and everybody walks away thinking they accomplished something. Oh my God. Oh, I could go on and on. The Democratic Party. The reason. And I need to emphasize this because certain people in the independent media, the YouTube stuff, the Rumble, the Rock, Rockfin, different platforms, are trying to explain why we go after Democrats and not Republicans. And here is the reason. It's because when the Republicans are running for office, they will tell you exactly what they want to do. And that's what they try to do. And they do it. They're evil. The shit that they're doing is, is criminality. But at least we know that they're telling the truth. They're being honest. The Democrats, on the other hand, particularly people like AOC and the squad, they lie. Because they said some great things in their campaigns. AOC was right on top of the problems. And she identified the problems. And she identified how to solve the problems. She gave lots of speeches. They're all on videotape. Digitally saved. Sorry. And they lied. That's the difference. They know what needs to be done. And what did they do? They caved to the oligarchy. They caved to the deep state. They caved to Nancy Pelosi. They caved to the establishment. And there's only two reasons why that would happen. They were either threatened or they were bribed. And that's it. I think they were probably threatened and bribed. Probably both. So why would people like AOC and Bernie Sanders go completely against everything they promised and to support the establishment's policies, which have not done anything for the American population whatsoever. They are trying to say maybe we'll give a little bit of a, a debt relief for students that have uh, student loans. Let's try to make more access to help <laughs> oh, God. Access to affordable health care. God Almighty. That's why we attack the Democrats, is because they lied and they promised to do a lot of good things and they haven't done anything. And then the Republicans falsely say that they're socialists. I hear it all the time. 
conservatives believe the bullshit. These people are not socialists in any form. They are corporatists, they are fascists, they are evil, and they get away with it because they're protected by the media, the corporate media, and the oligarchy, and the deep state. Look what they did to Trump. I am not a Trump supporter, I am not a conservative, and I am not a Democrat anymore. I would never be a Republican, that's why I've joined the People's Party, peoplesparty.org, third party movement. But, as Ramsey Clark said, I don't agree with everything Trump says, but I will fight to the death to give him the right to say it. What did the social media took him completely down? What an abomination to do to a president of the United States. Amazing. Amazing how they were able to do it. And then the shills like, that are pretending like they are progressives like TYT, Chank and, and Anna, are giving lip service and kissing Nancy Pelosi's ring. You've got Nina Turner. Oh, the squad's the best we got. It's the best we got. Oh, we can't push for force the vote because it's just not the time. We got bigger fish to fry right now. Well, they haven't fried any fish. It's like, God damn it. What the fuck? What the fuck? God, it's just, it's freaking unbelievable. It's absolutely freaking mind-boggling that this shit continues to go on and now we've got this disaster going on in Ukraine and Russia and that's because of Hillary Clinton and her creating this fiasco called Russiagate. That's why the American population is going along with this crap. You know, it's NATO that's the problem. It's the U.S. military that's the problem. <sighs> Broken nearly every treaty that we've ever signed. That's Trump did that also. You know, Obama did it. Trump did it. Got us out of the the non prolif non proliferation treaty with uh, nuclear weapons with Russia. This Ukraine thing was planned many years ago. They want to take down Russia, and then they want to take down China. That's what the military and the deep state want to do. Because why? Because those are the two countries on this planet that have any possible chance of stopping what the oligarchy is doing. But our towel boys, the British, the Saudis, these scumbags, are pushing this bullshit too. British Empire has been uh, wrecking this planet for many, many decades, for several hundred years now. Before that, it was the Romans. Before that, it was the Catholic Church. I mean, you know, the oligarchy is like the British royal family. They think they have this divine right to rule because of their bloodlines, which is total bullshit. But, what happens? Americans fawn for the for this new king. <laughs> king Charles. Give me a fucking break. This guy is a scumbag. The Windsor family, which are actually Germans, look it up. They uh, have been an evil institution on this planet for many, many years. With the World Wildlife Fund. They're pushing their environmentalist policies. King Charles and his father, well, King Charles wants to come back, wants to be reincarnated as a tampon, a used tampon. And his father wanted to come back as a deadly virus, wants to be reincarnated as a deadly virus so that he can reduce the overpopulation, so-called overpopulation of the planet. Isn't that nice? What a guy. What a great guy. 
Oh my God. But I can guarantee you none of these population reductions are going to affect any of the British royal family or any of the elites or any of the oligarchy. I guarantee that. It's mainly going after black and brown populations on this planet. Looting operation. Unending war. When will America stand up against this evil empire that we were living in, that we are living under, and end this? AOC said, "All we can do anything as long as we just have the political courage. Well, she lost her courage at the door. She walked in. Obviously. They don't even talk about minimum wage anymore, being brought up to $15 an hour. They don't even talk about Medicare for all. They don't talk about any of that shit. Anyway, it's just exhausting. But the only hope we have is the People's Party. The third party movement. It's the only chance we have of turning anything around because the Democrats are corrupted and they are not for you. They are not for the American people. They never will be. They are elitist, corporatist, fascist. Republicans have been that way for many, many years. But we know what they are. They don't, they don't you know, pretend anything. It's the Democrats that pretend like they are for the people. They are doing something to help us out. But all they do is give lip service and they write memos and they send letters and they bitch uh, on Twitter, but they don't actually do anything to help anyone except the super rich. So there you go. Okay, I gotta go. This is Terry Allen. This is a car rant. I don't even know which episode it is anymore. Could you subscribe? Could you give a like, please? You know... I get, I'm getting more and more subscriptions. Nothing compared to what I need, obviously. I don't know. Maybe people just don't like the sound of my voice. Maybe people just don't like to hear the truth. You know, because it, it just upsets them. And it, it creates anxiety. Oh my God, how do I feel today? I'm a little bit, I have some anxiety problems. I need some Valium. Good luck, everyone. I'll see you in the, the nuclear bunkers soon. All right.